says it's six o'clock. Um, welcome introduction. Are so we, we're hang on, are we uh, recording yet? Oh, oh. Let's make sure we're recording. <laughs> Margie. Margie. <laughs> this is why if I had to make my living as a as an administrative person, I would start today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll the whole time. I'll call the meeting to order again then for the for the record. Um, do we need introductions or I think we've all gone through that. Um, first thing we need to, I need to certify that we conducted an executive session today, December, and it says December 20th, that is not right, February, not <laughs> February. Uh, at 5.30 and the topic of discussion with limited receiving information about prospective and current employees. No final actions are taken by the board. I'm now ready for approval of minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the December 10th, 2023 meeting? December 19th, was it? Oh, December 19th, sorry. Well, you have to. No, you actually, when it comes to <laughs> approving minutes, it's fine to go at you okay, can so vote even you weren't there. Yeah. So moved in and out. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 I probably should have said any discussion, sorry. Um, the motion carries. Um, can we get a motion to approve the minutes of the January 5th, 2024 meeting? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Nothing opposed. Um, it's, um, and I, so that's our vote. Then I, I, I vote aye. Aye. All those in favor? Yeah, all in favor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, sorry. You <laughs> oh, did you say aye? Okay. Um, care, the vote, the motion carries. Um, can I get a motion to promote? Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm now sorry. I'm going to go to board business. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going by your cheat sheet. I'm sorry. Well, that's just a cheat sheet. That's not the agenda. Okay. So, so I apologize. Sorry. We'll, we'll ask for the um, chiefs or their representatives to certify claims and payroll. Yes. Mm -hmm. As being accurate and up to date. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And now Bloomington Police Department will give its statistical mm -hmm. reports for 20, February 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, do you have any slides, Chris, or is we just working out the paper? Here's your agenda. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. just looking at this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, okay. That's fine. Yeah, I just didn't know. Um, so if we look at calls for service for the month of January, they were at 5716, um, almost an identical duplicate to last year. Next slide. Um, this crime total is off, and I'm not sure where this slide originated from, so we're going to update you next year, I'm sorry, next month <laughs> with better, because the 2023 numbers are not correct, uh, and we're checking on 2022 numbers as well. Um, 2024 numbers are also not correct on there, so again, I apologize, I'm not sure where this slide necessarily originated, but those are incorrect totals. <clears throat> Um, the traffic stops by month, uh, 1376 um, for this month. Whoa. That's significant increase. Yeah. Right. Um, that's part of the um, initiative that's helping us bring down some crime rates mm -hmm. that, we'll, that we'll be able to highlight for you next month when we clear things up. Sure. Do we keep data on racial breakdown of people? We do. For, okay. And does it reflect the population pretty closely or? Within the margins, yes. Okay. Uh, involving weapons, again, they're down from last year. Uh, now, unfortunately, we, we did have homicide in January, um, so that's reflected in here as well, but our numbers are have fallen for this month at least. Uh, adult arrests for this month were, or January, were 193 as opposed to 163 from the year before. Juvenile referrals, we had none in January as compared to four last year. Uh, that is not the end of a hate crime reporting period. You'll see that in April, at the April meeting for the January to March. Um, these are nuisance calls for service. Again, disturbances make the large bulk of those. Intoxication is part of it. Vandalism is part of it. Uh, and again, there's oftentimes a cross-pollinization between disturbance and intoxication. So you see that. I talked to Joe this morning. <laughs> Uh, we had 807 and a half training hours, which is up from last year. We had one new officer completing the ADR ILEA refresher course, two detectives attending a homicide course, 13 officers attended the mandatory in-service training, 10 officers online breath test research, and then you see K9, CERT, CDU, and the Honor Guard at their normal monthly trainings. 
Community engagement, there were 13 as opposed to 11. Uh, community engagement hours, almost 31 uh, as opposed to 21.7 in 2023. And we had more personnel involved this month. Uh, some of those were the police social workers at Bloomington High School North. Um, not even going to attempt to pronounce that word. Uh, the Latinas meeting, uh, Monroe County Humane Association outreach, Kinzer Flats DRO meeting, and the DRO outreach meetings um, and other meetings. We have Larry Bear's drop off at BPD. Can you think about that one? Yep, uh, that is it, that that retires. A, or I'm sorry, it's in honor of a retired IMPD officer. His daughter now lives in the Bloomington area, and every year she brings in. Uh, she calls them Larry Bears. They're small, like police uh, stuffed animals that the officers have in their patrol cars. They can hand out if they're on a scene where uh, we've got a child involved. And we've got a visit to Cedars Christian School coming up. Police social workers, they had 13 new referrals in this month. Uh, that's down a little bit from last month, but they've got a lot of continuing contacts. As you see, 348 uh, continuing contacts. They've assisted clients with getting housing, assisted on scene with a juvenile who located their father deceased, uh, and assisted with a client assessing some financial resources or having issues with Social Security and disability. Um, yeah, and he was eight. Oh. Yeah. And he, he got a lot of help. Yeah, so. I'm sure the social worker yeah. connected to all the resources. We had to find relatives first. Oh, okay. Because he was by himself. By himself, yeah. Dad was deceased. Oh, so he had no other guardians. No, they were out of state. So. Um, we had someone writing in wanting to uh, talk about Citizens Academy and how well it went for them. They really appreciated the Academy itself with some special thanks to uh, Sarah Chanavez and Officer Garrett Heitink um, were noted during that. And we're into general expenditures. So, let's see. We'll do the general business before we do. That's what's next on the agenda. So I want to touch a little bit on uh, where we're at with the number of officers we have. So we're authorized 105 officers. We are currently at 85, so we're 20 short. Um, we do have one that's currently at the academy. He graduates April 19th. Um, we have three certified awaiting approval from the state for the pension fund. And we have um, eight um, in the current process awaiting the conditional offers um, uh, that we would extend to them once the board gives us um, the authority to do that. Uh, we, have, we have a program called Community Service Specialists, which are non-sworn people that take minor calls for us. Um, we had a hiring process for that, and we are in the process of hiring four. Um, we're just waiting on the approval from Human Resources um, to uh, to finish that up. Uh, we're hiring some part-time community service people. Um, we have two of those people and we're waiting again for HR um, to approve that. And we have two openings for social workers. Um, the job posting closed yesterday. Um, we've not been, uh, we've not received the applicants, the applications from HR for us to start the interview process. Uh, but we believe that there were five people who, who applied for that position. Next is uh, purchase expenditures and procurements. Um, there were two large purchases of around, I think they were like 20000 each, and they were for um, to Axon, which is the purchase of tasers. And body cams. And body cams. And then we bought some radios, I think we'll see. Do we using tasers again? I'm sorry? We're using tasers again? We never had them. Oh, but we're going to get them? Is that yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All the jail used them, and that was that whole issue. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Everything blows together. Yes. Well. Yeah. Tasers, the, the proposal went before the last Board of Safety, mm -hmm. um, and, and it was approved by them, and so we're moving forward on purchasing tasers. And it's if you're not familiar with what they are, they're a, they're a less lethal option that um, Bloomington police officers have never had, but every other law enforcement agency in the county does have them. And so um, uh, 
the last mayor approved moving forward with with uh, um, outfitting our officers with that piece of equipment. I'm curious. Um, will there be trainings now that we have these uh, tasers? Like, will there be like a training, and then you'll report them? I would like those reports, just like the training reports sure. that y'all have. We can do that. Thank you. And all the officers who have them will be trained on them. Okay. But just anyway, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Their gun is a taser and all that. Anyway. <laughs> um, so ready for the personnel issues? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, now we'll go to um, making offers of, to the people we just discussed, executive session. Um, but let's start with, um, can I get a conditional, can I get a motion to, to make an offer of employment to Adam Kirsch? So Second. All those in favor say aye. Excuse me, hang on, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have you take a look at your cheat sheet, right please. Here? Okay. Oh, what was going to order in the agenda? You want me to go this order? Well, I want you to be able to read all of that because your motion should include what oh. those steps are. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. Can I'm, I knew it this. Being a, I'm being a <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it. Um, can I, I have to revise my, my request. Can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer employment to Adam Kirsch contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process, physical examination, psychological examination, accepted by local and state patient effective immediately? Second. Um, here, have motion and second. Is there any discussion? Um, all those in favor say aye. <laughs> and no, no, no. And, and so, <clears throat> pass three to zero. Okay, can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer of employment to Audrey Warren, contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process, physical examination, psychological examination, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately? So moved. Here, motion a second. Is there any discussion? Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, three to zero. This, this is getting very repetitive. I apologize. Yeah. Um, can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer employment to Anthony Hampton, contingent upon sex, successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process, physical exam, psychological exam, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately? So moved. So, second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Three to zero. Um, for Joseph Sheehan, can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer of employment to Joseph Sheehan contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process, physical examination, psychological examination, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass three to zero. I should have brought a drink. I didn't realize I'm going to be reading this much. <laughs> um, can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer employment to Riley Pardue? Contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process. Physical exam, psychological exam, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Three to zero. Can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer of employment to Aaron Messing Masingill, contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process? Physical exam, psychological exam, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately. So moved. Second. I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Three to zero, motion carries. Can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer of employment to Peyton Wallace, contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process? Physical exam, psychological exam, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. For Tyree Dabney Murphy, is it Tyree? Um, can I get a motion to extend a conditional offer employment to Tyree Dabney Murphy, contingent upon successful completion of the remaining steps in the hiring process? Physical exam, psychological exam, accepted by local and state pension, effective immediately. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and we still need to do the promotion of, um, can I get a motion to promote Officer First Class Tyler King to the rank of Senior Police Officer, effective March 4, 2024? So moved. Second. I have motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Okay. Now we're ready for the, do we need to sign anything from now? Or do we wait to sign everything at the we end? We can sign at the end. Okay. Um, and then we need to go next slide for cert deployment. Okay. We had uh, none in January. Thank you. Ready for fire department business? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tanya Daffron, Assistant Chief. I put together the report, so please, if there's additional information that you want or don't want or see a different aspect, please let me know. So, these are January numbers. Um, run breakdown, as you can see in the upper right, uh, 2024 runs are in red, um, lower than last year. So, and then the location, most of the runs are in the city. Wait, how do you get 2024? Is the red? Is the red line. Since we are only, we're a month in arrear, so we only have January numbers okay. so far. So next, you'll have two dots next month from January and February. Oh, the dots move up? Yeah, they move according to oh, okay. the run. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we just put four years, because if you put five years, it looks even dizzier. Thank you. This is a response heat map for all the runs. Uh, again, this is just the month of January. The red spots are where we go frequently. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. This is the response heat map for false alarms. Again, you can see where we're at pretty frequently. East 3rd Street campus, south. Turnout times, turnout times are the times it takes the <coughs> crews from the time the alarm um, is acknowledged for them to get on the rig. Our goal is, in the blue, is less than 80 seconds for fire runs and less than a minute for EMS runs. The blue means we're totally within the goal. Green is okay, yellow needs help. Response times. So this is the travel time for the first responding engine on a fire call. Uh, we are meeting the goal of less than 240 seconds, 60% um, of the time. So. And you can see at the 90th percentile, we're at five minutes, 53. Prevention and public engagement. Last year, we actually was the first time um, well, prevention actually met their inspection goal. So we, since we met it last year, we upped it, we upped it this year. So, and we were uh, actually had added another inspector uh, mid-year. So that really made the difference in getting some of the uh, inspections completed. Training, as you can see, we exceeded our uh, goal, which is roughly 30 to 35 hours per person on the department. Um, we do the head start a recruit academy January 22nd, and that's all they do is mm -hmm. train 40 hours a week. So, and there were uh, four of them are totally brand new recruits, and one was a rehire, so his was an accelerated. And those on the right, those are the breakdown of the topics that we have. This one right here? Yes. Is zero January? Help me understand. Where is it January? January is the column you have. As we go for, oh, go okay. progress, then there'll be, there'll eventually be 12 columns. The red line is that, that's the goal. And when we have See, blue seven. across the board, or we have blue above the blue, the red line, it means we exceeded our goal. For training and education? Yes. So that makes sense. Like I said, and we'll have some conference hours coming up. So we, the MIHs are headed out, the inspectors are going out. So the categories will fluctuate month to month. So. And what's some of the other training? Is that the biggest column by far? The biggest column is other. So that's where we have physical fitness. So everyone is, uh, all the operations personnel, if they're working a 24-hour period, um, they're expected to work out. 
at least for an hour of that. Uh, the other cat, it's a catch-all because some of the other things that we do train on don't really fit in any of the other categories. Mm -hmm. So, in a lot of the online certifications, they fall in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Talk about how the goals are. How you, what's the process for establishing the goals? The goals is, like I said, 30 to 35 hours per month per person. So, of that, if we average that someone works 10, 10 shifts a month, so that 10 of that would be working out, right? And then we want them to work uh, <coughs> two hours of uh, on every shift. It's pretty much either assigned through the training division, assisting with the recruits, uh, officer assigned. So they might say, you know, the last fire we didn't do so well pulling hose, let's go down to the tower and pull some hose or throw ladders or, um, and they're also uh, in the other as part of the SOG medical protocol review. So half an hour of that a day is what uh, ISO and uh, National Fire Standards is what says we need to have 35 hours a month. That's what sets our, our mark that we try to right. reach. Okay. Yeah. And so the same for like, um, the time to fire suppression, those goals are coming from a state or national standard. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Turnout so we, times, all those are coming right. from national, from national standards. Mm -hmm. yeah. standards. Yeah, we didn't <coughs> randomly pick that. <laughs> it would be lower or higher if you were... You said you didn't pick it. <laughs> well, didn't pick right it. now it's a little bit higher because I mean, we're, we're really not in a fire station right now, so our travel time from bay to the apparatus is a little longer because we're not in it. So some of that depends on that. And then uh, you know, right now it's not too bad. Summertime when the construction and stuff takes over in Bloomington, the travel time gets yeah. longer due to yeah. all the roads being tore up. But so I don't know if we would pick anything different. That's just a nice target to try to hit yeah. and see where we're at with it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, mobile Integrated Healthcare, these are our community EMTs. These are the ones that provide the gap care. Um, and a lot of referrals that they get are from crews who are being very proactive. They go respond on a 911 call, the crew does, and say this person looks like they need some help. And we'll refer them to the uh, community EMTs and they go out and visit. And how can they improve this um, patient's quality of life, basically. So as you can see, um, we had one that due to the MIH intervention, she got into a facility for rehab and she lost 50 plus, 50 plus pounds. Now she's mobile on her own, which it sounds like she was not before. Um, got a patient and their spouse to a skilled nursing facility and that's better for them. And again, coordinating uh, with an agency to get respite care for patient caregivers after months of trying. Um, respite care is relatively new, so and they're finding that caregivers actually, um, there's a very high percentage, like 30% die before their patient does. So the caregivers, it's an extremely stressful job. It's important to get the respite <coughs> care so they can get a break. And then, uh, patient appointment with the primary home visiting service. They moved it up nearly a month um, because the MIH was able to say, hey, you really do need to get this medical assessment in quicker because of X, Y, Z. So, and if you've ever tried to mix to uh, up, get your appointment scheduled earlier, <laughs> it's not an easy task, so. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, would you, would you give me a 60 second overview of the Mobile Integrated Healthcare Initiative? Right. I don't know if I can keep it down to 60 seconds. Sure, but no. Just super high level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but really, the gap care is there. People are out there who um, need further assistance, and they may not even know that Bloomington is rich with social service or organizations that are more than willing to help provide resources. I mean, until this started, didn't know that there was like a mobile um, agility lending library. So if you needed a walker or a cane or something that you could borrow one, you wouldn't have to buy one. Um, if you need food service, if you need assistance with getting home health, home uh, respiratory therapy, uh, physical therapy people don't even know that they that these things are out there and so meanwhile they're just 
people who get to stay in their homes longer because of these type of interventions because they're helping this connection is a service offered by the fire department yes yes and so you're connecting them to other community resources right. as a function of right, right. And it, people it's just part of your day-to-day -day work as it's not a special call it's not a special right. it's a we're in the community we see this opportunity we make a connection right and we get we get a lot of lifting assistance calls uh, so if an apparatus goes to the same person three or four times because they've fallen recently we will set them up with an MIH visit to help them determine do they need to can they stay on their own do they need to go to assisted living that kind of thing or is there something they could get to come to their house help them with that and then also it helps um, with I think quality of life for people who are trying to stay home and not go to uh, assisted living facilities yeah. or, or nursing homes, that we can send them out and they can help them discover what other resources are out there that they may not be uh, aware of that they are tied into. Yeah. Like, why are they falling? Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's just a safety assessment in the house, right? So it's assistance with that and then referring out to other agencies who may help them better. And we're doing the medical assessment. And the, communicating with doctors and nurses and vital signs and everything. I would just say one quick thing more. I think I think from the fire service side of this is more of a preventive thing where yeah. the fire service has always been a reactive. We wait on the 911 call and then go fix the problem. This is trying to be on the front end and keep the problem from happening so we don't have to have the 911 call. Which is something we've not done before. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. I don't know about the 60 seconds, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Letters of appreciation and commendation. Oh, okay. And recognition from the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And the Space Force. Space Force. And, okay. And Space Force. What did you do for the Air Force? I cannot tell you. <laughs> 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 While I put together statistics, I do not add all the certificates. So. <laughs> you can't tell us because it's a need to know. Thing. Yeah, there we go. But we have to, uh, high level, we have to have Mike arrest you. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have to kill us. <laughs> Exactly. Then um, general business. Do we have anything? I don't know if we have anything. We've had no huge expenditures or procurement yet in January. Uh, anything to expect? Uh, we are working currently on uh, trying to procure a ladder truck, which will be in about the $1.7 million range. That's coming up hopefully for uh, for us to review. And then um, we're working on some software for the MIH program that will be a in that. And that's a cheap one. Three wire four one. Yeah. Ladder truck. Maybe. Yeah. Two. Two. Okay. And then sure. personnel issues. We have two on long term surgery recovery, uh, one on light duty, and three that are sick right now. Do we have any new business? Not from the board. Do we have any petitions and communications from the public? I don't think so. Um, someone like to make a motion to adjourn? Except for stay for a bit. We, I think we need to sign some stuff here. But. That's right. You got some right. signing to do.